The story under analysis, entitled The Rocking Horse Winner, was written by David Lawrence, an English poet and writer, and published in 1926. When David Herbert Lawrence was young, he was sent to work in a lace factory in order to earn some money for his family. That was the family background of the author that reflected a lot on his early works. The short story under analysis is a perfect example of difficulties that the author had outlived in his early life. The story describes the aim of the main character, a young boy Paul, to earn money for his mother, to make her happy, and the events ha that happen on his way to fulfilling his wish. In the very beginning of the story, the readers get acquainted with the main characters, the middle-class English family who live in a pleasant house with a garden and some servants. Despite the fact that the children of that family, a boy, Paul, and two girls, have everything they need, their mother, Hester, is haunted by a sense of failure and misery. She always says that they need more money. According to the story, the mother used to have a different style of life that she missed a lot and wanted to get it back. These words pursue Paul everywhere. At Christmas evening, in their children's room, during the supper, and even when children stop playing for a while. Their family life style exceeds their income and the parents spend a great sum of money on presents for their children. Once their uncle Oscar Creswell comes to their house and Paul shares his secret about betting on horse races with Bassett the gardener with him. Paul tells him that he has been placing bets using his pocket money and has won and saved 320 pounds. Then uncle Oscar and Bassett both place large bets on the horses Paul names and as a result Paul decides to give this sum of money anonymously to his mother for, as a present for her birthday. However, this gift only lets her spend more money. Disappointed, Paul does his best to merit the approval of her mother and spend hours of riding a rocking horse in order to get in his Clairon stale state uh, when he can learn the winner's name. The story ends tragically as Paul dies falling off his rocking horse. The story has clear indications of setting. It is set somewhere in a town in England, presumably in or near London. Pointing to England, there are a number of place names and markers. To begin with, the author underlines that father's work or the main character is somewhere in town, so we can suppose that their house is situated in the suburbs of the town. Quote, the father went into town to some office, end quote. Next, there is a mentioning of the country of Hampshire, where the uncle of the main character lives. Being a county in the southern England, Hampshire is one more reason uh, to assert that the action takes place somewhere in England. What is more, the author emphasizes that the uncle's house is in the country. According to that fact, we can suppose that the place of setting is the suburbs of a big city. Quote, the car spent, sped on into the country going down to Uncle Oscar's place is Hampshire. End quote. Pointing to London is a mention of Richmond Park. Richmond Park is the largest uh, of London's royal parks and the second largest park in London. According to the story, Richmond Park is a place where the main characters spend some time talking about the races and then drive home. To my mind, as the author doesn't depict the road home in many details, the house of the main characters might be somewhere near the center of London. Quote, Uncle Oscar took both Bassett and Paul into Richmond Park for, the, for an afternoon and there they talked. End quote. The story has only indirect indications of the time of the action. For example, the main character Wynne, with his uncle, visited the Lincoln races. According to the history, they first appeared in the city of Lincoln, Lincolnshire, in England, in 1926 and were closed in 1964. What is more, the year of publication of the story is 1926, so I believe that the year of the events is 1926 too. He per uh, quote, he pursued the 
matter no further, but he determined to take his nephew with him to the Lincoln races. End of the quote. The author gives the reader a very small and undetailed description of setting and time. To my mind, uh, there are the dialogues and events or the story that catch the audience's attention and the setting doesn't play a great role according to the author's idea. The story is a third-person narrative. The narrator sees the events from his side and lets the reader see what is happening. The narrator is partially limited to the main characters. He reveals the emotions of them. He makes the reader sympathize with the boy. Regarding to the main characters, the reader cannot follow their thoughts and we can only suppose what they feel. The dominant tone that the story creates is dramatic. I believe that the author tries to make the reader suspect from the very beginning of the story that money is not what this family needs. The writer creates the depressive atmosphere using the antithesis. Quote, she married for love and the loved, love turned to dust. End quote. And the repetition, quote, there must be more money, there must be more money. End quote. That makes an atmosphere not only depressive, but a little more sinister, as the children hear these words everywhere in the house. The atmosphere of the story changes from its start. At the very beginning, the readers experience the feeling of sympathy towards the mother, but then, observing the dialogue between the mother and the son, the audience realizes how selfish and self-centered his mother is. The reader sympathizes with the boy through the story and the attention is caught by the boy's attempts to win a great sum of money. What is more, it is the attitude of the mama, mother that creates a feeling of, so of sorrow for boy, that his mother doesn't understand his feelings and doesn't support his aim to prove to his mother that he is happy and lucky. At the end of the story, the mood turns into the reproachful as everything becomes a lesson for the mother. The title of the story is speaking. The rocking horse can be concerned as a vital part of the description of the main character, the boy. It can be a versatile symbol. To begin with, it symbolizes uh, the childhood. Only a child could ride a rocking horse without breaking it or falling from it. What is more, it can also symbolize an interest in horses and horse racing and let the readers suppose on the plot of the story or themes that can be discussed. The author tackles many significant moral issues, including the impact of wealth, the existence and meaning of supernatural powers in our life, and parent-child relationship. Impact of wealth on, people's, on people is a dominant theme uh, of the story. The question of wealth becomes the measure of value for everything in the life of the mother. The absorption in money as a measure of worthiness in the mama's mother's mind becomes so enormous in ho in the home that her son Paul complains to his uncle. I uh, quote, "I hate our house for whispering." End quote. Paul hopes that by winning a considerable sum of money, he can quit the house and bring his mother luck. The supernatural power in our lives also is also one of the evergreen themes. Paul experiences a clairvoyant state. That is uh, how he learn uh, the horses' names, and this helps him to earn money. I'd like to point out that in the story, the theme of the impact of wealth on people is conveyed through the character of Paul and his mother. This major theme is also woven into the story's plot. The story has a clearly defined plot structure. The text opens with a brief description of the main characters, the middle-class English family and their style of life and also with their financial situation. This family lives in a pleasant house with a garden and a number of servants, but also we find out that such style of life is up to their financial opportunities. But the parents will never tell their children that they have problems with money. They still try to give their hires everything they can. The author draws a true-to-life portrait of the middle-class English family who live in the 20s or the 20th century. Underlying that, the author doesn't give uh, to us an image of appearance of the main characters. The readers can only suppose how they look like. In, on the other hand, the author impresses the state and psychological portrait of each character upon the reader as the story conveys mostly 
moralistic ideas than narration of the events. The author gives the detailed description of the mother's state and attitude towards her life. The mother is portrayed as a materialistic woman who once had everything in her life but married an unlucky man that destroyed her life and her love. She doesn't hide from her children that she's not happy in marriage. What is more, the monotony from the monotony and inertness of her state are highlighted with the parallelism in her description. Quote, there was a woman who was beautiful, who started with all the advantages, yet she had no luck. She had only children, yet felt yet she felt they had been thrust upon her. End quote. Thus, the opening passage creates depressing and threatening mood of the setting. The effect achieved primarily by using the repetition of the phrase, quote, there must be more money, end quote. Inciting incident of the story is the moment when suddenly the main hero, Paul, tries to prove his mother that he is lucky and uh, receives an indifference and misbelief from her in response. The simplicity of the language in the dialogue between the mother and the son harmonizes well with the simple emotions experienced by the son that makes the reader follow his mood easily. Development of the story includes the boy's attempts to win a great sum of money, predicting the horse winner in the horse racing, where he goes with his uncle Oscar and his garden ambassador. The author draws the reader's attention to the Paul's earning for success and how he is supported not by his family but his friend and his uncle. Climax of the story comes when Paul presents a great sum of money to his mom but understands that this sum will not make her happy. She doesn't count it as their family income. In the resolution of the story, the author focuses on the last chances of boy to earn his mother's attention and regarding to the fact that she remains indifferent towards him, he does he dies riding his rocking horse. The conflict of the story is represented by the contradiction between the selfish and self-centered woman who is portrayed fixed only on wealth and her little son Paul whose wish is only to make his mother happy. This story makes a great effect on the readers to clarify the impact of wealth that can influence every person. The author uses a great number of repetitions in order to create a greater expressiveness and tense. Quote, we are parents, Partners, we've been partners from the first, end quote. The different types of questions, for example, the quest back questions, help the author to show the uncertain emotion, intonations of characters in the text. Quote, you won't let it go any further, will you? I promise, Bassett, end quote. To my mind, the main idea of the story is that human nature needs human nature needs are endless and there is not always enough money for people's greed according to that story money will not make you happy as loving relatives and people near you can